just wanted to get the offensive stuff out of the way to start out. Um, Ayuk and Sermon. We thought that it was just a week one thing. Maybe they got into trouble with the team. You know, we heard some rumors about them breaking team rules. There was supposedly maybe an injury for Ayuk. Both came back. Both were still used sparingly. I think Ayuk got two targets, one catch. Sermon got one um, attempt. Uh, unfortunately, he, it was like a you know a, a legal hit, hit, hit to the head, helmet to helmet contact, knocked him out of the game. But he did look good. I mean, it was he was you know I think he got eight eight yards on the carry. Um, tell me, what do you make of you know Ayuk and Sermon's just minimal use in Shanahan's offense? Yeah, so obviously we come on here, we give our instant reaction the day of the game. And as my thoughts progressed throughout the week, it, the Sermon thing started to make more and more sense to me. I really think Sermon was brought in to play with Trey Lance. Because if you look at Sermon's skill set, you know, a lot of people thought, well, he's a big, big, powerful back. He should be the goal line guy. But that's not really his skill set. His skill set was he ran out of shotgun pretty much every single play. When he was at Ohio State, a lot of the the read option stuff, which is exactly what they're going to do with Trey. So I think that that is the reason that Sermon was brought in, was to play more with Trey Lance. If Trey Lance plays, I believe Sermon gets more burn. So that one doesn't concern me so much. He did look really good on that one run. He looked actually pretty explosive. It sucks that he got hurt. It most likely looks like some sort of concussion protocol right. situation. We'll see if he's able to play next week. But that was encouraging. And then Ayuk had a really nice catch. I mean, he, you know, Jimmy threw a decent ball, but it was it was definitely high. And Ayuk made a great play on a third down catch and, you know, looked good in that one play. But I don't know what's going on with Ayuk. That's the one that, that's interesting to me. That being said, I feel like he's not missing out on a lot just because outside of Debo, there's really not a lot of, of passing going around, right? Like Debo is down the field. Up, yeah, at least down the field. And we'll talk about, you know, Jimmy as, as it goes on. But yeah, there's there's just not a lot to go around. And so let's figure out this Ayuk thing. I think that as the season progresses, he will earn some more burn. And I would say eight games in, Ayuk establishes himself in this offense as a full-time starter. But it is a little bit worrisome that this is a guy that they – traded up for and he's not getting much run so it's something yeah. to keep an eye on but at this point i'm not extremely worried about it just because i don't feel like they need him to ball out at least not yet maybe in week four uh we'll see about that week three but right now it's okay jason elliott's talking about the play i bail jimmy out on that play yeah. um it was thrown at least to a place where only i could get it and it couldn't sure. be intercepted and Ayuk did make a great play on the game. Earlier in the game, uh, Jimmy threw the ball really high to Ayuk, um, where there was no chance for him to really catch the ball. So he got two, uh, two, atten or two throws towards him. Here's my thing, um, Jesse, and you could correct me if I'm wrong. There's going to be a time where this defense can't keep bailing out the offense, and the 49ers are going to have to play a game like they did in New Orleans in 2019 to clinch that first place seed and uh and outscore the other team and the way that i see it is that in that game with new orleans we knew who our three top three uh wide receivers were it was um emmanuel uh, sanders uh debo and kendrick Bourne. I don't if you our if you were to ask me who are our top three wide receivers right now, Debo's definitely by one by far. And then it's like who? Jawan Jennings got a touchdown this game. Last week, Sherfield got a touchdown. We all think Brandon Ayuk is the most talented out of all of them. And it seemed like Ayuk was used more, like featured more in the offense last season, even with Debo there where they did some wide receiver screens. They just got him the ball where he could just go be electric and, and uh, make some plays. He was in jet sweeps, things like that. And we're not seeing any of that. You know, with a talent like Ayuk, you would think you might force feed him the ball just to give him an opportunity to go out there and make a play, which we know he's capable of. I mean, he 
you know, he had one of the most ridiculous touchdown runs um, after after catch that we saw all that all season last year. So that's what I'm more worried about. You know, like I, I feel like it's more about the long play. We need these rece- receivers to get set, and it doesn't seem like any of them are getting enough opportunities to really get a flow in in this season other than Debo. And I feel like that's going to bite us in the butt in one of these games where we need to outscore everybody. And these these receivers are just not ready just because they haven't gotten the burn. Yeah, I mean, the, the way that's set, though, with Jimmy is two receivers are not going to eat in this offense. I mean, Kittle hasn't even started going yet, right? Mm-hmm. And Kittle really, we thought coming into it, was the number one pass catcher out of all these players. At the very least, he's number two if Debo is what Debo has looked like the last couple of weeks. So I just don't think that there's enough for a third person. But, you know, you talked about how they're not force feeding him the ball and, and getting him, you know, some end of rounds, pitches, that type of stuff. They haven't even really done that with Debo. And it's very interesting. This offense to me looks very vanilla for a Shanahan offense. I don't see, I mean, there's definitely some shifts and some motions, but it just seems a little watered down. And I don't know if that's because they're just trying to install a little bit by a little bit and and not show a lot. They felt like they could get through these weeks. I, I'm not really sure about that, but it just seems like this offense is not as dynamic pre-snap um, or even post-snap is what they normally would be with some of the trickeration. So we'll see how that plays out moving forward. But you're right. I mean, they've done really nothing to try to get Ayuk the ball. It's it's almost as if they don't view him as a uh, as a primetime weapon the way that they did even last year as a rookie. Yeah, and uh, I agree with you, man. This offense, as far as the big play opportunities, has uh, has not shown that. And it would be kind of strange to me, like, why we wouldn't at least see a little bit of it unless there's a certain game that – um, Kyle Shanahan has in his mind where he's just going to turn the switch on and all of a sudden it's going to be a brand new offense. But yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know. I mean, I'll, obviously these guys are professionals, so, you know, they're probably all ready. You know, we're, I'm probably overthinking it, thinking that they need constant reps to be able to get their confidence up and things like that. But uh, yeah, man, it's weird. Like Debo gets, you know, eight to 10 opportunities and the rest of the receivers get less than that combined it kind of seems like you know so yeah. um i just feel like you know at a certain point we're gonna need to see these receivers really ball out and i just hope that them not getting much burn right now doesn't take away from their sharpness um later on down because eventually these uh, eventually defenses are just gonna sh- um you know shade towards debo take him out of the game and then you know who who who's the next man up, right, as far as in Shanahan's eyes. So that's going to be interesting to see. Um, 